We are continuing our course on Rookie Reminders. And again, a poll was taken with some Central Iowa real estate agents on what's the best tips and advice you got as a new agent. And I've created a do's and don't list for you. And this is the do list. So the first one up is as a rookie in this business, whether you're brand new or maybe you're rounding out your first year or so in the business, you're going to screw up. Okay. It's inevitable. Number one, you're doing something new. Number two, we're human. And number three, um, there's lots of moving factors when it comes to real estate. We've got a lot of people that we work with in the industry. We've got clients. We've got clients on the other side of the transaction, co-op agents, co-op brokers, lenders, appraisers, underwriters, home inspectors, and other vendors that make things sometimes not go as smoothly as possible. So while we do try to avoid it, give yourself a little grace. You cannot know everything. Um, I've been in the business as of this recording almost 21 years, and I by no means know everything. I know a lot, but I don't know everything. Um, so just know, give yourself a little grace, work with care, but know that sometimes things get screwed up, which means you need to be responsible for your actions. Be accountable for what you do. Um, be solution-based. Focus on the plan, not the problem. My transaction coordinator that I work with, Diane Williams, she was always so great. She would always say to me, Amy, everything is figure outable. And the first time she said that, I thought, gosh, darn it. No, we've got to get this. And then I calmed down. And I thought, no, she's right. Um, if plan A doesn't work, there's always a plan B, plan C, plan D. Plan, uh, D. So do be responsible for your actions. Um, anytime something does get screwed up, though, take accountability, have a five-second funeral, and then move on to a solution. Um, and one that is customer-based so that your client is best taken care of. It's about your client, not about your ego. Um, next up is do be respectful, um, and that is to everyone in the transaction. And I just gave you a long list of everyone um, that's involved in a deal. I know sometimes these transactions might feel tense. I know it's tense um, for, our, uh, for our clients. I read an article once that said buying and selling a property is the second most stressful thing to losing a spouse. So everyone can kind of go through a lot during these transactions. Um, I know agents are really um, motivated to get a commission check and make people happy. But in the process of that, really do work to be respectful of everyone in their transaction. Um, they're just trying to do their job. I do want you to be an advocate for yourself and your clients, of course. Um, that's one of your number one fiduciary responsibilities. But I also sometimes think that we miss the idea of just giving each other a little grace that maybe there was a bad day, maybe there's a health issue, and maybe we just at the end of the day need to be a little bit more respectful. Next up, and this is probably a big passion one for me, is to stay up to date on real estate matters. That could be laws that change. Um, I know that the Iowa Association of Realtors every year sets a plan of what they're going to do during the legislative period and what bills they're watching and what ones they're looking at to propose in order to protect home ownership and in order to protect us as real estate agents. Um, Jen Kingland is the lobbyist for IAR and anytime you get to hear her speak, please do so. Um, I know that in February, they usually do a bus in day to the state capitol where agents from all over the good state of Iowa, great state of Iowa, let's be honest, bus in and go and meet with different um, legislators, lobbyists, there's usually a guest speaker. Pay attention to those things um, in laws, state and local. And then also I'm gonna put on that list any lending changes. There's different lending regulations that can happen. Um, we had a big one in 2015, but since then, about every year, we've had a small one that's maybe affected 
um, credit score uh, for FHA loans or something like that from a re regulatory perspective that it really does help for you to stay on top of. Next up is pay your taxes on time and create a business budget. Um, as a rookie in this business, you might be thinking, Amy, I've not made that much money yet. Or maybe you've made a ton of money wherever you're at in this story. Make sure that you hold some back for taxes and your business expenses. It's really hard when you get a really big fat commission check. Maybe you just had a six or seven thousand dollar check drop into your account. You think, woo, woo, money bags, money bags, money bags, I'm here. Settle down. Not all of that is your money. Some of it belongs to Uncle Sam. And it's just so easy to get on this treadmill in real estate of thinking, oh, I'll make up with it with the next commission check. Oh, I'll make up with it with the next commission check. And a lot of agents end up postponing their tax period, doing an extension, paying unnecessary fines. Get in those good habits from the beginning. And I promise, I promise when you take control of your money, you will feel 10 feet taller and um, you'll really have a lot of confidence in your business. Um, work with a financial planner. Um, this was great advice. And I know it kind of goes on with creating a business budget and a household budget. But financial planners are great even when you don't have any money. That's probably when you need them the most. So that when you do get money, you know what to do with it. Um, the only thing I'll say about a financial planner is they're probably not going to recommend the last thing on this list and is buying um, rental properties. I know a lot of financial planners maybe don't always look at your rental portfolio versus looking at stocks, annuities, Roth, IRAs, things like that. So meet with a financial planner, but buying and investing in real estate, you already know this business. Um, you're in this business, you've got first opportunity to see properties as they, they become available and, um, becoming an investor could be a great way for you to have a second income in real estate. And I know that you're just getting one business launched and I'm already suggesting another, but here's what a lot of people don't tell you. And maybe it doesn't really get talked about in pre-license because you're working so hard to get your license. The world in real estate is great buying and selling, helping clients, making commission checks. But it is even better when you've got a second stream of income. That's what takes you from good to great. So I would consider what that might look like um, to build a rental portfolio. Up next, we're going to do the don't list. So stay tuned.